Skeleton. Mm, my new notebook. Do you notice I brought my old and my new notebook? Mm -hmm. Can you believe I filled this up? Remember? Remember this little notebook? Um, it's all full. Now there's the um, design for the last shot in the game. I can't show you guys. You guys always use this. So yeah, this is the new notebook. And this was kind of a disaster at first because this, I didn't notice until I started it. It's, it's wide ruled instead of college rule. And this game is definitely college level. But then I decided, actually, this will make me feel like I'm getting a lot more work done because my free writing will fill up more pages. I purposely got white so it would feel pristine and fresh. It's smaller! This is like totally like a baby notebook. It does, it makes me look stupid, doesn't it? But then again, I'm getting older so it's hard to see stuff. New notebook. Um, yeah, let's talk about stuff. We, we shipped Reds last week. I don't know if you guys noticed that. We shipped a game. It was awesome. Yay, Reds. It has, um, it has, it has made about $800,000 so far on the, on the old Steam thing, which is fine. And, um, it's, that's not a big enough number that we're going to be immediately completely independent of publishers, uh, this year. Like, it was a secret back of my head, kind of hope, where all my hopes are in the back of my head. It's it's a little it's a little tricky financially because um, we pretty much you know I think conservatively would estimate that we've made most of the money that we're going to make off of it. We might make more when we release part two, but it's not going to be equal. It's not going to be like the equal amount of sales. So we're working on something that is um, usually you're working on something and you're like oh when this we release it it'll make a bunch of money for us and I'll pay for more stuff and so we already got our kind of got that money in advance twice so. So you're making a bigger, more complex game that you know isn't going to sell as well. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's just for love. <laughs> this time it's just for love. That's our slogan. <laughs> the money is gone. Now we're just running on love. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, the, the, the first part made enough money. It, it definitely made its numbers. I mean, it was, we went through these phases of like, let's, con let's estimate, you know, conservatively because it's an adventure game. And uh, just, you know, we had a conservative estimate for it, how much it would sell. Everyone think in your head, how many units this game is going to sell? How many do you think it's going to sell? A million. A million? Mm -hmm. How many do you think it's going to sell? 150,000 year one. What do you say? I was going to say 200, but I was thinking more lifetime. Huh. So, let's say it was 300. <laughs> <laughs> and then somewhere along the line, we got really excited about people's response to it and, and excited by the game itself and how much we liked it. And, and you can see this, you know, part of us were like, you know, if this does, if this does really, really well, it might, it might change a lot of stuff for us. A lot of people here kind of hang on because, like, they know. They know Tim. They know, they know the management. They know the vision. And if it hits, it'll, it'll be really good. It'll be really good. So we're just hanging in. And you can see that in like Camden's, and I think Camden was reflecting what a lot of people were, were kind of hoping for. And it didn't sell that much. It didn't sell so much that it changed our whole business plan for the year. Um, it sold what we kind of estimated originally. Uh, so far, it's made about 1.6 million dollars on Steam, which is awesome. And it's um, about that's about 70,000 people purchased it. About 80,000 who are the backers. That's about 150,000 units out there. And so that's I don't want to be too sad about it hitting its numbers because just a little part of me was like. What if, you know, it's always part of you the hopes, what if something really, like a big, you know, outlier, this thing is just crazy hit, just unexpectedly, like our Kickstarter. Once you have an experience like that, it's hard to go back to the normal world where things sell what you expect them to. One thing I am a little interested in, I'm not, not sure, is that, you know, we just don't have, we're not doing any marketing. We're not spending any money on marketing. And one thing I'm just looking at is to get around that, you know, we do a lot of press presence, um, a lot of social media. Um, we rely upon features on our, and on the, the, the distributors, in this case, uh, with Steam and Valve. But it's like, what, how much do those banner ads help? And, you know, those other traditional forms of marketing. And it is something I'd look, like to look at in the future because um, that would be the one thing that I think publishers have done different that we haven't done.
I mean, because I mean, our fans want us to be successful commercially. This this whole thing is for not if you know if we don't come out of it able to be more independent and then you know be able to create more creative works um, independently. So um, you know, I think we need to take that in consideration when we come up with our our plans for Act Two. Maybe we're really lucky to have split the game in, in two because uh, then we get some more chances and then we have more platforms coming up. So yeah, I think it'll be good. Let's launch it again. Can we do that? <laughs> we are. Yeah, so that's just to finish the whole Reds update. We're, what the team is working on now is a lot of, instead of diving into part two, is actually platform work to get it out on more platforms, to sell it on like iOS and um, the other platforms. Um, but would we do that soon? Or sooner than we had previously thought we were going to do it. The sales of the game make it look like the people who bought the game were people who played adventure games before. It seems like we've found those people, but we haven't quite gotten yet to all the people who've never played adventure games before. Uh, the idea was why we were waiting for design and writing for Act 2 stuff, that we can try and jump on some of this platform work. Um, to fill time, um, and potentially even um, move forward some of those platform releases. Hey, Matt, oh, we have some questions for you. We do have a question, question for you. There's a lot of work that Oliver has to get done before the iPad version can come out, but that's the version I'm waiting for. Well, all of them, I'm waiting for all of them. From a studio standpoint, the most important thing is still the platform work, because we want to make sure that we can get the ports out as soon as possible. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been going pretty well. It's just, you know, it's a lot of work just kind of looking at those platforms and seeing uh, kind of how is the game performing on that and what are the kind of very specific issues. That's all. Awesome. So I get to keep this, right? Also just generally kind of getting the infrastructure in place to, to kind of uh, launch games on those platforms. Very often, you know, different storefronts, Require, have different requirements when it comes to how you deliver the product. You know, it's very different delivering something to the Google Play Store versus the iOS App Store versus the Mac App Store and things like that. So there are a whole bunch of just infrastructure things that we need to put in place. And so I've been working on those a lot. So as you can see, there's still some stuff that's broken. For example, some invalid textures here and there that shouldn't really be there. I need to investigate what's going on. Uh, you should be able to play through the game from the beginning to end, um, which is huge. But as you can see, you know, the game the game runs, and I would even have sound. I'm in the basement this morning. Oh, I hope no bad tingleberries came and wet your bed during the night. Oh, great. All right. <laughs> oh, computer, off. I mean, traditionally, like, port houses handle uh, moving stuff to different platforms. So, like, why do it internally and not just hand it off to someone? Because. The intrinsic goal for an external port house is different than what our intrinsic goal is. For a port house, it's like, well, our contract says we have to get it done for this platform for this amount of money, so we will employ any hack that we can think of to make this work. Like we don't, we like essentially throwing out any, any kind of way of like clean software development is the first thing that goes, um, and that's okay. As a developer, if it's a product that's done and you're never going to touch it again, and you get the code back and you just archive it and that's it. But <laughs> if it's something that you will have to work with in the future, you don't want to do that. And I was also wondering, uh, some of the criticism for Act One was that what are you smiling? I don't know. Criticism makes me always smile. Uh, was that it was like, oh, they made this for a casual like iPad playing audience? We'll find out. <laughs> Let's hope so, right? <laughs> I made it for the hardcore fans, only the hardcore fans. I was only thinking of the hardcore fans, and I hate everyone who's not a hardcore fan. Someone came up to me at PAX and was like, hey, I really like Broken Age. I, I don't, it seemed really short, though. It seemed like they cared more about getting Elijah Wood than putting money into puzzles. I was like, well, who talk, first of all, who are you saying they? That's me. And that's not how the money worked on the project. Go, and oh, why am I talking to you? I was disappointed in your game. I just wanted you to know. You have a good point. I should quit the games industry. Yay! You fans. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am excited about all the things you're asking me about. I am, really, I am excited about coming on the iPad. I'm hoping people who've never played adventure games will give it a shot and like it and play it. But we didn't, you know, dumb the game down for them. We just made it the way we wanted to make it.
how much uh, time do you have left to work on this? Because it seems like um, people are starting to roll back into Broken Age. Yes, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing that's obviously happening right now. Um, we're kind of also working on, starting to work on Act 2, which is nice. Um, let's talk about Reds. Remember Reds? It's not done yet. Part 1 is up. Part 2 we got to do now. That was crazy. I've never, we've never done anything like that where we ship something and then immediately, except for like Connect Party, but I've never had to go back into a game after finishing it. Usually like I finish the game and then I immediately like look away from it and just walk off into the desert and never look at it again um, until like 10 years later or something like that. Well, we're so used to like shipping a game that mentally your brain starts to heal and close off. Like in, <laughs> it's like you like um like you have a baby. You know how it is when you guys have a baby, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you like, and then your body starts. Oh, let's pretend that never happened. Let's just heal <laughs> up. But no, it's like it's like it's a, there's twins. Yeah. There's another one coming. Eight twins. Um, and so normally I would just be like, okay, that's done. And, you know what's next? But it's like, oh yeah, there's a whole other part of the meaty part of the story that we have to get into. I was like explaining all the crazy stuff that happened in Act One. And Lee, you're still, you're still working on it or you're? You seem surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I just know you're in demand. I know. You're in the office? Here's all the Act Two threads I started. So these are all some of the concepts works we've been doing. So you can see some of them are revisiting characters or like changes to recurring textures, characters or, or scene modifications from Act One new props, or here's the, here's like a puzzles one. Yeah. Here's another, Curtis is now into metalworking, so he had all these, um, he needed a table in his room, so we were trying to figure out the positioning of the table and what they needed to do, and Tim was like, yeah, that's that looks too useful with all those tongs on, they get rid of the tongs, and hey, those guys are too far apart, they can't be in a cutscene together, so I'm like, oh, we'll put them here, and he's like, yeah, that's great, but now they're blocking the mold, so put them here and here. So we're kind of like, I'm trying to just work through as much of that as fast as possible without having to program anything. And um, I mentioned story beats, so Bagel did a lot of these early on as he kind of went through that. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff is just like, he and I are both kind of working on a different aspects of the same thing, you know, who's kind of like trying to break down what the characters might be doing. I was trying to break down what changes to the space and puzzles would have on that. Right now on the project, I think our animators are all out in the field, free ranging across the company, helping out. But our programmers are still on and we're gonna meet today with uh, anyone who's still around to talk about the puzzles for Act 2 and get that kicked off. Awesome, everybody. Thank you for coming and still being on the Reds team, even though we shipped for some of it. Unlike some people. Yeah, I'm like the What is Johnny wrong with the artists? Late, Johnny come late, Lee's. That's, that's not really at all. Johnny leave Johnny early. Johnny leave early? Yeah. Johnny leave early. <laughs> Those people who do what we ask them to do. Whatever. So we can get this uh, design all straight away and start implementing it and um, we're done. And then we're done, right? I don't even know if there's a schedule. We have a schedule. But we'll probably have a better schedule after we get this design hole actually tasked away. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the high level picture hasn't really changed in a long time. Um, you know, even before we finished Act One, I think the high level picture is still the same. Um, he has like story beats from a long time ago. And he and I have talked about it um, on a high level, so I don't think that's changed. But a lot of the very specific puzzles or cutscenes haven't been designed or written yet. And some of that has changed since Act One, you know, so um, I think Tim took the feedback of a lot of people wanting a more challenging game. So, um, how much harder do we want to make the second half of the game? Much harder. Much, much harder, harder, apparently. Or... Let's put a puzzle in that no one I know. can solve. <laughs> There's a... a every once in a while I design something like, there's no way anyone would ever get... Okay, let's put that in. You went hard, we'll give you hard. We're gonna give yes. you hard. <laughs> Well, it's interesting to try and reconcile people complaining about the difficulty with how it felt in playtesting when, like, people weren't getting out of the train thing. And, like, because it was a reaction to, like, how miserable people appeared to be when they were stuck. Yeah, someone, someone made a post on the forum that was really astute about how a lot of the difficulty that the, the old adventure games had was obfuscation. Like, the fact that you had, like, 10 verbs and you had, like, 20,000 items um, made it uh, seem a lot harder than if it was, you know, a more limited choice or whatever. And no internet. Um, and it had no internet, exactly. Well, seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah and no yeah. real playtesting. Right. Some playtesting, but not like we did. We've kind of gone for, like, slicker, slicker inventory. And we did that over the course of those adventure games, too. Like, Throttle had, like, a very small inventory. And, of course, people said that was too easy and short. Oh, there you go. I mean, would we want to add another row to the inventory because of that? Would we want to have a double stack inventory? Like Bella shrinks down and then shake and carry her around. <laughs> and you can open her up and get her inventory. Wow. 
Whoa. I'm trying to just, just general good design stuff is watching out for things where you find a solution before you find a problem. And, um, you know, I even, I mean, I was trying to find those in Act One too, but you just, some things just never, just are not clear. Okay, well, let me fly through this and then we can just highlight some things to come back to you later. Well, there's some like challenges I'm trying to achieve with the second act, like um, the interaction between Shay and Vela, maybe not direct interaction, but more relevance of the switching back and forth, making that more relevant. Even if it's just information that passes back and forth in your brain. Um, and I'm really thinking about how to wrap up um, the character arcs in the end, because mostly with adventure games, you have a story, but you tend to think about the progress of the story as being the puzzles. And they solve a bunch of puzzles, and then they win. You know what I mean? Whereas if you're writing a movie, you'd be thinking about the total ups and downs these characters are going through. Um, and so I'm focusing a lot more on that because I really want to be satisfying how the characters end up in the end. Not just they achieved all their small goals and added up to one big goal, but that they actually had a moment of, you know, some real lows and highs and that the ending actually meant something to the characters. Hopefully. But it's easy to get distracted by the mechanics of solving puzzles and think that the story is kind of resolving. And the A plot does resolve in adventure games, like your action plot resolves because the character achieves their goals. But the B plot, like the emotional plot, often is kind of left, um, or it's summed up by the two characters kissing at the end or something like that. But um, to have it actually sum up in a, a meaningful way for the um, characters is something I hope to do. When's it gonna come out? The game? Yeah, no, um, I really am trying everything to make sure the game comes out this year. And then people always go, what? And then I say, the first act took two years. And so if the second act can take less than one year, it's a miracle. And that's what we're doing. If the directive is we want to ship by the end of the year, I think we've talked a lot about, like, things that would need to happen to make that doable to like where if we time boxed a, a schedule to December, um, we'd still have to do some stuff to, to pull it in a little bit. I think that's the conversation that we need to have, I guess. Cause if not, like uh, it's going to be very easy to just keep pushing stuff back. Like we did on act one. Well, the two big reasons, two of the big reasons are well, three. There's like back our expectations because mm -hmm. they, a lot of people thought it was going to come out like two months after act one. So there's like that message thing that we have to kind of get out to people. Like a couple of people I've talked to is like, I hope it's coming out this year. Yeah. So there's like that. Um, there is uh, financial, just that Justin has been working with December and all his financial planning. You know, so that's a that's a pretty hard thing. Yeah, both for getting profit in and for spending on the project. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for me, just the possibility of actually being up for awards because we shipped the first half of this year. So we're either going to be not eligible for 2014 awards or really coming out in January or, or March of yeah. 2015 when everyone will forget about it by the exactly. time 2015 awards come out. So there's that. I think those are all the right reasons and all the reasons that I feel like everyone we've talked to about this wants to really make December happen. But I think that it's, uh, it's just going in knowing that that would mean like doing whatever it takes to make that happen and, and sacrificing in some ways. It's possible. It's possible. You know, most video game productions are a series of bottlenecks. And trying to get everything unblocked with minimal bottlenecks is, is what's going to make or break December. Um, the other, other problem with December is there's a lot of unknowns as it comes to puzzle playability and testing. So we can take certain steps, like we can try and work through earlier versions or script earlier versions and test them, but you know, ultimately that's the fun factor and that's a little hard to, to know how that's going to hit. And when you don't leave yourself a lot of iteration time, it may not be enough and you don't really know. I think we can do December. To me, it's like an infinity far away. December I, of this year. I always think we can do anything. That's why my games are sometimes late. It's really just the best game that we can make and we feel like we can actually make without crashing the company into the ground. And I also just want to finish it because it's a while it's fresh in people's minds. Mm -hmm. And I do want to get the team back. I think there's a pressure to keep them on another project because they have these publisher milestones. The publisher milestones are always scarier than internal milestones because there's no outside force threatening to not pay you if you don't meet the milestones. So we have to be that threatening outside force. 
can you make some phone calls from outside the building and with a funny voice? I can. And be like, we won't pay you guys <laughs> if t- you don't meet your milestones on this project. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gonna figure out it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the other big factor, right, is we went to this smaller team, which I think from a budget standpoint was a good idea, right? Because you're writing, Bagel and I could do some early concept work Mm -hmm. and stuff. If we were working from a no, this is the target deadline, that is not a good way to work. If it's a, this is our target budget, and so we're lowering the burn while we figure stuff out. But if we were like, no, this is an immutable, immovable time here in December, then we should have, I mean, this is in hindsight, but we probably should have tried to get more of the team and start full production like right after AF or something. Yeah, but we couldn't have. There's no, there wasn't, wasn't enough design to execute on at that point. Perhaps, but I mean, I just, you know, that's just, a, I think it's just a, a, one of the other factors, I think, is that it felt good to have a small team for a while while we sort of like could digest some of these things and all of it work on the platform, but yeah. it did sort of put this maybe end date a little bit in jeopardy. That's very true. Of that. So Maybe all of our stuff will make so much money, we can have more time to make Act 2. <laughs> it's possible. Oh, it sounds like we're not going to have more time, though, right? It sounds like we could have more money to throw out the problem and put... The money does oh, make yeah. Money. yeah. Maybe that will make more, we'll hmm. buy some more people. Uh, yeah. Uh, it works pretty well. I'm, I'm overall actually pretty happy with um, how it turned out. Um, the load times aren't terrible, uh, you know, we were able to get a lot of visual fidelity out of the game, um, you know, essentially making it look as good as on PC, uh, which I'm pretty happy about. So if I go on the App Store, what is cool is like obviously if you go to games, that's right there, Broken Age, it's also in Best New Games, which is nice, and it seems to be trending pretty well also in the charts. So I would say overall, so far it's been a really successful launch. Last night I spent unknown hours playing through Broken Age, and I'm so glad I did, but I don't I didn't know I was gonna end unfinished. Uh-oh. We don't really call it part one on the app store. Uh, I should say part should I, should I answer this guy and say part two coming soon. Should I say soon? If children love this as much as they have the tentacle or psychonauts, then please mark me as fuddy duddy and ignore me. Okay, where do I do that? It was like no game I've ever played, it doesn't glitch or crash. <laughs> The stories are great, and I can't wait for Act 2. Okay. Two stars, not as advertised. This game says ages 9 through 11, and that's about all I think would be fun for. Oh, and the fake train wreck? Why are we doing this over and over again? The kid actually says he would rather jump off a cliff than do it again or something like that. That's how I feel as well. Please refund. There's no way this game is worth the price. I think he's stuck on the train. So maybe that wasn't too easy after all. Anyway, overall, it's really good on the iPad. Very happy with the iPad launch. I'm good. I think we all will know in a few days, kind of from some of our third party um, tools that send us information about app sales. But yeah, fingers crossed. So, moving on, uh, Broken Age did decent sales on iPhone. Uh, iPad. iPad, sorry. Uh, decent enough that we're, we're looking into doing iPhone. Um, and potentially Android tablets with it. So uh, that was good. Um, it's meeting forecasts. It's not like a, a runaway hit, but it's, you know, it's good. It's decent cash flow. So uh, the numbers right now are about 100,000 for you know, four days. So we expect for the actual feature week, while it's a editor's choice, it'll probably be around 150,000. Um, and then it'll probably go down about one fourth of that for the next week, while it's as a previous editor's choice. So yeah, decent, decent numbers. So it was, it was received well. It looks like it's, uh, it's, it's doing what our expectations were, sales-wise. Expectations. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can expect, you know, about 100 to $150,000 is what I expect out of a, a week for an iOS game that's a content-based game. Yeah. I think he was telling me they conformed to his expectations, but he's always secretly, they met his sales Forecast, but still, forecasts are always pretty conservative, so he's always secretly hoping that his sales forecasts are wrong. My expectations, just to be clear though, they're more about, my expectations are more reflective of the current market on like iTunes um, for premium based games and like paid content based games. So um, it's, it's less of a reflection about the game and more a reflection about the market. We were at number four and now we're at number 10. We might not be number 10 anymore, but. It was fun to be a number four for a long time. Oh, we finally got pushed off of 10. 
Let's see how far down we are. 22. This looks dirty. Um, beaten by frozen karaoke. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy with the performance of the iPad, but it, I don't think it made a lot of extra money that's going to allow us to like hire another programmer and throw them at the team. So I don't think it's going to change the schedule, unfortunately. We can always hope. I keep promising that I will stop hoping for those kind of things, but it's hard not to think about. Like, what if, what if it was a big hit? Then we could totally hire a programmer to help finish it. But, um, but I'm just happy it made enough that we can stay in business. It's just there's no magic bullet, basically. So you know, it's uh, everything's a grind, uh, especially in the game industry. Like, you know, you have to have you know, amazing press and uh, get the feature spots and get huge VO and have amazing polish and then you do okay. Uh, but if you didn't have any of that stuff, you'd do horrible. <laughs> so um, the, yeah, the hit, the hit has been, has been elusive for sure. That notepad what do you guys says, think of it? Uh, that notepad says the end on it right there. Oh, this is how things are going to end. This is the guy who guessed that Shay's um, chip was Mog Chothra. I'm super happy that no one seems to have guessed the big spoiler at the end of it. I really thought that was going to get out. And actually, long ago on the forums, one guy guessed it, and no one followed up on it. Like, no one. He just said his little thing, hey, what if this is the case? And then no one answered him. And I was like, oh, man. Um, by the way, since I was the guy who guessed that, by the way, here's how I figured out <laughs> how, it, how, I, how this is how, why I'm so smart. And then here's how, what I think is going to happen in Act 2. He's done it for you. I'll, yeah, what if I get a bunch of ideas from him? That would, might be bad. People send me stuff as if I have time to read anything.